All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in Acts chapter 11 today. So, let's get into some prayer. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. If not, let's try to get one for you. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord, and I just want to ask you, Lord, to bless this this word today, Lord, that we would all hear something from it that we need to hear, Lord, that all of us would wake up today with, with gratitude in our hearts and thankfulness in our hearts, Lord, and that we wake up with love for one another, just as you have love for us, Lord. Help us Help us to be that picture of you to others, Lord, that they can see that work that we are doing in our lives with your help, Lord, and with your leading our way, Lord, and that they would desire that and that we could help them to find that. And I just ask, Lord, that you stretch your hand out over this over this great country and over this world, Lord, and and, and help those of us eager to work for you, Lord, to be able to to do something that could produce some fruit for your kingdom, Lord. Help us do all of this in your holy and mighty name. Amen. God is so good, guys. Come on now. <clears throat> Acts 11. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter one today compared to what we've been getting into, but hopefully we can make it worthwhile here, guys. Now, the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went into an uncircumcised man and ate with them? But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And they heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how we he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I begin to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Amen, guys. Thank goodness. Let's go a little further. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad, and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Amen. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. 
Not a good name. It wasn't meant to be an uplifting name, but we have sure turned it into one. Right, guys? Let's get into this more. Acts 11, verse 27. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Amen, guys. Let's go back and let's get into this a little bit further. Thank you guys for letting me share with you. It really does. I, I love it so much. Thank you all. Just thank you. 11.1 1. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. A report like this concerning Samaria had previously made it to the apostles in Jerusalem, causing Peter and John to investigate, through whom the Holy Spirit came upon Samaritan believers. This signified their inclusion in God's church, sort of a Gentile, Gentile Pentecost, guys. 11.2 And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him. Those of the circumcision, these were Jewish Christians who believed that the circumcision should be required for Gentiles seeking to identify with the people of God and those who follow the Messiah, Jesus Christ. 11.4 But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, Here Peter's repetition of his rooftop vision and the subsequent goings-on at Cornelius' home reinforced the paramount significance of this event in which Father God called uncircumcised Gentiles to faith in the crucified and risen Jesus Christ and gave them his spirit. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 11.12 Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered the man's house. Here, Peter makes sure that they know that he went to Caesarea in direct obedience to the Holy Spirit and that six brethren had accompanied him on this mission to Cornelius. 11.14 Who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved? God's merciful saving grace is often extended to whole families and this often appears in the Old Testament, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and their families, and also in the New Testament too. Check out Luke 19.9. Check that out if you get a chance. Luke 19.9. Okay, 11.17. <clears throat> if, therefore, God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? Absolutely. So the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the first time that this full title for Jesus is used. 11.18 When they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Okay, All because of their rules, the Pharisees had objected even to healing. But once these true followers of God saw the spiritual healing taking place, they were excited. As Christians, we should always be eager to see God save people, even if it does stretch our comfort level, perhaps exclusively, if it's, if, or especially if it stretches our comfort level. Also, although humans are responsible for ourselves in turning from unbelief and sin, only God can enliven renew, and empower dead hearts to turn toward him. Called to repentance. Biblical repentance means sorrow over sin and a change of heart that turns us from sin toward God. I know I talk about this a lot, but it's very important, guys. The fruits of our repentance are the good works to which God calls each and every one of us. He has something for each of us, guys, and it's something that he needs us specifically to do. Not that he can't get it done other ways, but it's an he, he wants us to be the ones to do this, and it'll benefit us if we do. God always only wants for us to grow and grow and have more and more in the kingdom of heaven, guys. 1119. 
Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. Scattered by the persecution, Philip took the gospel to Samaria, the Ethiopian eunuch, and on to the Philistine coastlands. So others went northwest to Antioch and Syria and Cyprus, the Mediterranean island. Antioch was a cosmopolitan city viewed alongside Rome and Alexandria as a, as, a, as a place of great cultural and commercial influence in the first century. So as most places that are of great worldly influence, you know they needed God there. I mean, we need him everywhere, but, but man, sometimes these places that are so highly viewed in man's eyes are places of just a lot of sin and a lot of availability of sin and... Um, just, just just, a lot of stuff that we don't want, guys. A lot of worldly stuff. 11, 25, and 26. <clears throat> then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Galatians 1.17 tells us that Saul spent a number of years in exile in Arabia, being taught by the Lord. Barnabas found Saul in Tarsus and brought him to teach Antioch's new Gentile converts. It seems Barnabas was more concerned over the spiritual growth of this first mostly Gentile church than about keeping his leader, leadership position. Amen. Because Barnabas was a great man. He wasn't worried about things like that. Barnabas recognized Saul's passion and gift for teaching scripture. This is why he sought Saul in his home in Cilicia and enlisted him to make sure that new believers were grounded in God's word, strengthening their faith and launching a fruitful, fruitful ministry partnership, guys. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. We've got one more I want to share with you. 11, 29, and 30. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Antioch, the mission church, as we'll call it, took up an offering to send back to Jerusalem to the home church in order to aid with famine relief. Basically, from the very get-go, Antioch and its fledgling congregation are totally captivated by compassion. This so nicely illustrates and reveals a, a, a deep, deep genuineness in their faith, guys. Something that we today should really seek after and hunger for to, to, to mimic this. Thank you guys for letting me share with y'all. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this every single day. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, if you have any prayer requests, anything, put those down into the comments section, man. I love y'all. Thank you for letting me share with you. I'll see y'all tomorrow.